Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olean's.com Machine Embroidery Art. Lesson 34, Digitizing Animals and Creating Fur Effects. If you've ever tried to digitize animals before, you know that getting a realistic outcome is challenging at best. A lot of people like to use the uh, photo stitch program that comes with PE Design, and that does give a realistic rendition of people or animals. However, they are very stitch intensive, uh, and they have many color changes, and unless you're planning on sewing out only one or two, you'd be better off learning some of the techniques I'm going to show you in order to hand digitize your animals and try to get the most realistic outcome as possible. I'm going to start with what I think are the easiest animals to digitize and those are short haired animals. Uh, I'll start with my daughter's horse Penny and we'll get the image of him from the file and that's Penny. We're going to open her up and this image you notice I've taken a magic marker and I've modified it or edited I should say. That's so when as we all like to digitize very very close up especially with uh, not real clear photos it helps us see where we're supposed to be putting our stitches uh, like in areas here where my daughter's arm is in the way of what I wanted to digitize so I just magic markered around it. I do this technique for any uh, template I'm taking a photo of any photo I use I first print out a 8 by 11 uh, picture of it it doesn't have to be photo paper just print out it print it out get your magic marker or pencil and trace around where you want uh, the heavy stitches lighter stitches just give it a little uh, edit there then you put it back on your scanner face down of course and you go to your image tab and this time when you open up the image you open it up from the twain device uh, or your scanner and that way you'll get your edited template now uh, the main body of the horse is all fill stitch so uh, for that part of course we just use the regular line region tool uh, to do the fill stitch now right now I've got the uh, the region tool selected but I only have a zigzag line turned on and the region part is not so we have to make sure you turn that region so on so it'll have a fill stitch and we don't need a zigzag outline we don't need an outline at all because we're doing our own custom outline some of its uh, zig, uh, you know fuzzy and and, and some of its uh, smooth satin stitch so for the first part of the fuzzy, we're going to do that with uh, uh, a manual punch. After we do our, of course, we're going to do our fill first. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So I'm not taking any time to try to be accurate. I just did my fill, double click, and that gives you a fill stitch. And then you can also um, go to your sewing attributes. You can change the direction of it. You can change the color of it. Uh, whatever you want to do it's just you just get in the basic fill and then I put another fill on top of this fill but a uh, lighter density uh, to create a lighter color muzzle so I'm going to go ahead and delete that now for the fuzzy on the neck as I told you I'm going to uh, on the main I'm going to use actually let's use a curved manual punch and I'm going to start uh, my first stitch top bottom top bottom top bottom top bottom top double click okay so now you have just a plain satin stitch let's select that stitch go over to sewing attributes and I'm going to give a feathered edge just on the top and I can give it a little bit more of a deeper uh, deeper feather if I want do the same thing with the second layer uh, but this time we're going to change the color so you can see it in contrast. And I'm not going to go up as high as the first one because I want you to be able to see the first layer sticking out behind the top layer a little more. So we'll go top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, double click. 
So now, you, as you can see, I'll go into Realistic Preview. And you, well, you, you can't see it that great, but, uh, hold on. You can see you've got the uh, one layer in the back and the one on top. Now, in order to get the, um, the mane that comes between the ears, I forgot what the technical term for that is, but that is done all with the freehand pencil tool. And um, to use this tool, we're going to use that to create this fur here and then all the other little lines. So we're going to start to use the pencil. You just keep your finger pressed down on the left mouse button and you keep it held there as you just draw and this isn't going to look real good because I'm not up as close. I just want to quickly show you how this tool is used. And to finish your line, you just let go of the pencil of the left mouse button. But you see there's no stitches there. And the reason why that is, let's select that area that I just drew. You see just the dotted line. is because I had turned off my uh, line sew uh, when I was doing the fill earlier. So let's turn that on. But we don't want a zigzag stitch there. We want a running stitch. So that makes it a running stitch. And we don't want it light. We want the light brown on the top, not on the bottom. So let's change that color to black. Now, okay, so the same thing for the next layer. We're going to go to our manual punch. And we'll use, uh, now we'll use this color khaki. Oh, excuse me, not manual punch. I'm sorry. To the freehand pencil. <laughs> so we got the freehand pencil. We're going to put that in uh, khaki. And same thing. You just draw. Keep your finger pr pressed down on the left mouse. And then let go of it when you're finished. That will populate your stitches. The same thing for the uh, areas here. Uh, just drew in some freehand stuff here, as I said you'll be taking your time and let go of it and it'll populate the stitches. Okay, uh, the same for uh, this dog here, Tucker, Tucker the dog. Let's and let's see something here. Okay, as you can see with Tucker, he also is a short-haired dog and it's all fill stitches. This is a fill stitch. This is a fill stitch. Uh, the only way I've created the effect of fur is just with the freehand manual punch. Let me go ahead and turn this image off by clicking on modified. It puts the handles back up there, which allows me to push the delete key to get rid of that image. Okay, so let's pull in the image of Tucker. And I edited him with a pencil. I should have done it with magic marker because uh, it's a very grainy and bad photograph. But if you do your editing with your pencil well enough, you will be able to see on your software when you're close up where to put your uh, fill stitches and fur effects. So all of this was done in just one, one fill stitch. As you can see, uh, where is it? I'll turn that red. You see, all that was done in one uh, region. So, and the same thing happened uh, with with the other parts, all fill stitches. And then to give the fur effect, I used the freehand pencil tool and I just drew in some lines where I had given myself some guidelines uh, when I edited the photo so I would know where to put the, the fuzzy effects. So let's go back to image and I'm going to modify this so I can select the handles. Okay. The one I'm most proud of is Stella the Poodle because I tried for so long to create a poodle type effect hair. I wanted to digitize my daughter's 
dogs. These are all her pets, except for Homeless Bob. He's mine. And um, let's get Stella. Once again, another very grainy photo. But when I, I got up close to it, I knew where I wanted to put the plain fill stitch and where I wanted to put the poodle hair effect. So how I did this, and I'm going to just deconstruct this for you. I'm going to click on, I'm going to select the objects, and let's drag them to the side. You can see it. Now, you see what I have here? I have a fill stitch here, a lighter fill stitch here, and then I put this motif stitch on top. I'll show you how that was done. Now, for the first fill, I wanted full coverage. So, uh, when I uh, did my fill stitch there, I used the full default density of 45, uh, 4.5 rather, uh, and then I also checked under sewing because I wanted, as I said, full coverage. But this section here, I just wanted an underlay. I only put 3.5. I could have even had lighter because I wanted just to have an underlay because I want, didn't want the density to be so heavy and thick underneath. And you see here, I laid on top of it a motif stitch. And I'm going to show you how I did that here. So we went to uh, the line region and I chose an open curved line. And I chose a motif stitch. Now your motif uh, stitch, you have a whole bunch of motif stitches that comes with PE Design. And I tried just about every one of them trying to get a, a, a textured effect to, to, to look like poodle or lamb fur. And the closest that, that I came to it was uh, these here did sort of did it, but it just wasn't, wasn't enough fill. And as I showed you in Lesson 26, I showed you how to use the programmable stitch creator where you can create your own motif. You saw where I did a uh, chain, a uh, chicken wire, and then the one I actually showed you on the tutorial was the rope stitch. Um, this was one I created for the poodle hair, and I thought it would work out. did not look good. This is the one, it's just a little spiral here, that uh, turned out to work the best. So we're going to select this one, and I created this motif stitch on my programmable stitch creator. And uh, using my uh, the line sew curve, just start putting your points just like you would use any line stitch. And you can add points and remove points with edit just like you can with any line. But it doesn't matter if you cross over or if you, uh, you could use the straight. It doesn't have to be the curve. We're just trying to put some texture on top of this background so that it gives some full coverage and also gives texture. I'm not going to just double click. And now you can see, let's put it on realistic preview. I know you're not that impressed by looking at that, but let me promise you one thing. When you see how this looks sewed out, you will be so surprised at how much depth that it looks in real life. Uh, I was uh, hopefully uh, if you've ever tried to do this type of fur before this will answer your uh, dilemma on that because I tried for so long to create that kind of poodle fur and I was so pleased when I finally found something that worked. Now the most difficult uh, let's go ahead and get rid of our image here. The most difficult type of fur to do is long haired fur, be it dogs or cats. They are just a bear. Delete that. Delete that. And I'm going to pull in the image of old homeless Bob here. Now this is my kitty and he's a good old kitty. I'm glad I immortalized him on dish towels and aprons and <laughs> All kinds of stuff I put this cat on. Because it looks just like them. Uh, anyway, this one, animals like this are just plain time 
consuming because you have to do them almost entirely with the freehand pencil. And you got to get up real close and personal with the uh, zoom. And you really have to be a zoom monster here when you uh, are doing animal fur like that. So a lot of this fur I just held down on the left mouse and I just, you know, just started doing it. And it took a long time. And I would do a bunch of fur. And then I'd come back and put some more fur on top of that. And then come back and put some more fur on that. And then after you do all that, and you, you know, uh, let go of it to finish. Oh, that was a motif stitch. Let me select that. Change that into a running stitch. Okay, then when you finish all that, then you still have to get your edit and you have to probably change some things around, move them around. But uh, it's very time consuming. Uh, there is a shortcut to getting a fur effect. Uh, but, and, and it's good for when you're doing real large areas of the same color. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, how uh, we do that. Once again with the manual punch. Now, the last time we used manual punch we uh, had it feathered just on the top. But to create the fur effect we're going to feather it on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to give it a lot, I'll give it about four points. I'm going to give it a lot of uh, depth because I really want those feathers to cut way, way about the same. I want those, those that, that feathering to cut in way deep. So you start by uh, going to, it doesn't really, you don't even have to do that. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way down. I'm going to, at this point, uh, I could go back up to uh, click on running stitch, but uh, as I showed you in another lesson, I'm, I'm not sure which one it was, uh, I'm going to keyboard the letter V, as in Victor, to turn this into a running stitch. I'm going to go up to about here, just a little bit above it, click on it. That's going to be my top, and then I'm going to keyboard the letter Z, as in Zorro or Zebra, and that's going to be where I put my bottom one. So we're going to really cut in there. I'm going to go up here. And I try to cut down real deep into the first layer because we put a lot of feathering on it. Now I'm going to keyboard the letter V for Victor. I'm going to go up here, click on it for my first stitch, keyboard the letter Z as in zebra, and that will be my second one. And I want to go way down, almost coming to where the where the first layer of stitches was the top. That's how far we want to go. So we get full coverage. Now I'm going to keyboard the letter v, uh, v again for Victor. Click. Keyboard the letter Z. And then once again top, bottom, top. And you really want to cut down and just layer, take your time. And it's not going to come out perfect the first time. You're going to have to be doing a lot of editing and moving things around. Keyboard V. And at this point, I'm going to start, okay, keyboard the letter Z. I'm going to start angling the fur down this way. I don't know how that's going to turn out because, actually, and double click. Can you see where you're getting that fur effect now? Let's put that in stitches view. Can't really see. Let's change the color there. It has some contrast. Let's I'll select it first. And now you're going to be getting your your fur effect. Now, if I were doing the whole cat, I would have started way down here and started moving up. And then to, to give some more randomness, I would have used the freehand pencil and done some freehand. Uh, feathering on top of that. So you see where you can get a fur effect just by using the uh, manual punch with a satin stitch with feathering on both sides. Please uh, go to my website olings.com and uh, send me your samples of uh, animals that you've been working on. I would love to see your pets and how you're doing with digitizing them. Maybe give you a few pointers on how to uh, get the best rendition. Good luck!